All right, so chapter two with drawing hair. This is called how to look at hair simplification. And this is more about seeing than it is about anything technical. So the key here is a construction hat. That's what we want to think. Remember, hair equals a construction hat. The hat that uh, a construction worker is going to wear while building a house. Okay, why am I saying that? Alright, well, let me start to draw a head here. Okay, so. Hair is actually, if you were to zoom in on a microscope, looks something like that. There's a ton of individual hairs. Their length depends on the haircut, right? Just like a tree is made up of individual leaves like this. But it wouldn't make sense, as I talked about in the introduction, to draw all of them. So, it helps to look at the hair as one big shape. So if you were to draw a basic buzz cut on this character right here, what might that look like? Alright, well, let's see. Okay. It would look like this. And this is how I want you to think about drawing here. Very geometric, very simple. Right? Here's the top plane. It's a little crooked. But here's the top plane here. Here's some side planes. Here's a bottom plane, assuming that the light is coming from straight above and here's the side planes here so if you were actually inking this or you were drawing it or you're using a paintbrush all this area here might have a few lines in it right you might make a few marks to suggest it's hair like that but your light is going to be here right I need you to think of light as separated into purely light and purely dark that's the best way to look at hair. So, <clears throat> excuse me, if you were going to look at a sphere, right, and the light was coming here, you have the light side here and you have the dark side. And it's very separate from each other. There's not any gray zone. So that high contrast separation of value with light and dark, for now, I need you to think about hair like that. So again, think of it as this big shape. You know, and then if you want to talk about it in another way, you have a head here, right? Here's a head from the side in profile. If you had hair like that, <coughs> excuse me, and the light was coming in this direction, well, this is basically still a sphere, correct? So here, right there, is the highlight but this is still all the light side and here is the dark side now hair is like a helmet though so there's bottom planes so there's going to be a bit of a bottom plane here and as it turns down there may be more of a bottom plane here but basically it's still a sphere right so it's a pretty big jump to move from thinking of a million individual hairs like this into just looking at the head as a sphere but that's what you have to do think of it as a helmet on the head at all times all right, well, this is a male head right here. How would perhaps might you do a female character? Well, let's see. And we'll do her profile. Okay. So she has some bangs here. Here's her ear, 
right about here. All right, there's her hair, very simple. Now, basically, what's happening here, we have a sphere on top of her head, and then we have another shape that's happening right there. So that's what we're dealing with, all right? Now, as far as the light source, the light is coming right into the shot, right? Slightly above, it's coming into it. So, something like that, all right? Right into the frame. So, let's see, we would have a bottom plane here, subtly, right? You can already carve that in. Another bottom plane here. Another one here, right? And here. Now also, when hair is a little longer, like this, there's going to be a cast shadow. Now, hopefully everyone knows what that is. A cast shadow is, here's a ball, here's a ball, the light is here. This shape is casting a shadow onto this shape. So the hair is going to cast a shadow onto the face. So we have to think about that, because that's going to add some detail, and that's important. And we don't want to think of the cast shadow as coming just from individual hairs. The cast shadow is going to be a big, clean shape, because that's what the hair is, right? All right, so as far as the highlight of the hair, it's going to go just like that, right around the head. So as we're then filling this in, if this is dark hair, and you probably have seen this before, of artists when they draw hair, especially in comic books, they like to do this. They put the streak across the hair like that. What is that? Well, that's just the highlight. So they look at everything as one big overall shape, and then they put the highlight in there. So again, here's the sphere, right? And then if the, the light was coming in at this angle, similar to this one, you'd have a highlight like that, and the shadow would be more over here. So technically, it would fade off a little in that direction. But you can see how that's very beneficial. So all of a sudden, take a complex haircut, right, with bangs, and it's falling down the shoulders. You can keep this basically flat, maybe add, maybe make this fairly dark and this extra dark here, right? where the cast shadows are at. Just make sure you have this highlight across the head here. And all of a sudden, this head, which a head is a sphere for the most part, right? And the hair is now rendered as a sphere. Everything feels volumetric. It's working as a whole. You don't have everything working against each other. So you can imagine if you were drawing a million hairs here, trying to control that and also keeping everything cohesive, it would be rather tricky. Okay. So, one last little thought, which is going to segue into the next section pretty well, is you have to see the hair, as I've been saying, saying as a big shape. So, another analogy, you know your towel when you get out of the shower? It's a good thing to think about, especially for a woman's hair. Alright, something like that. Because you have to think about it as a helmet, right? But you can't really draw and paint it literally as a helmet because it might look a little funny. You're going to have to add detail here or there. So you can think about it uh, as a towel, right? The towel is going to have a little bit more detail in it, right? It might bend a little more, it might be a little more wavy, but it's still one overall big shape. So look at how this towel hangs off the head. The tension point, and this is getting into drapery a bit, and isn't that important right now. But the tension point is all right here, right? It's all hanging from here. On a female, the tension point is up top, right? The top of her skull, everything's falling off of that. Unless you have artificial tension point, like if she had a ponytail and that was sitting here. So if you identify that, what's it hanging? What is it hanging from? Is it like a pin? Is it a um, a uh, rubber band or a band uh, or the top of her head, what's it falling from? Okay, think of it as one big simple um, towel.
Another reason, another way, is what if there were poles in the ground like this, right? And there was something draped across that. So you take the same towel, and again we get into drapery a little bit. We have diaper folds, right? Folding off like that. But you can imagine hair being like this. Right? Maybe one of the crazy Star Wars characters, you know, they're wearing something that's supporting the hair up here, and the hair is hanging down like that. So imagining the hair instead of individual strands as one big uh, blanket here is going to be very helpful. So again, all of this, remember, big shape, make it a helmet, make it a cloth. You know, we don't think of it as individual hairs. Also think of the sphere and think of the planes of the hair as far as when you start to actually light it a little bit. Okay, on to the next section.